Hi folks, this is all the fruit. Today I'm foraging in Taman Negara National Park in Malaysia. Well, when I say foraging, in this case I don't mean it literally. You are not allowed to take stuff here and take kind of thing that includes fruits. So Taman Negara is the national park of Malaysia. That's why it's simply called Taman Negara, which literally means national park. It's situated in West Malaysia. I don't have so much experience with the West Malaysian jungle. Here you have elephants, tigers, rhinos, stuff that's mostly missing in Borneo. <laughs> they have signs like don't walk alone and stuff and don't run away when you see predators because you will trigger their uh, yeah, hunting reflex. So it's going to be fun. So I'm not allowed to pick the fruits, but the predators are allowed to pick on me. I'm also not allowed to leave the boardwalks, and I think here I'll kind of stick to the rules. By the way, uh, maybe you have noticed there are buildings around here, so I'm starting at the visitor center. <coughs> also, well, the jungle seems to be of really top quality. You can hear the, you can hear a lot of animals, insects, birds, I think I will soon also hear frogs and uh, monkeys. If you hear a lot of sounds in a jungle, that means that's a good jungle. That's a jungle you want to be. That's a jungle, that's a biodiverse jungle, where we'll also find a good selection of fruits. Around here, I don't know where most of the big trees are gone, some of them are still there. This tree here, the five o'clock tree, or the edible monkey pot, is not native, it has been planted. It has edible fruits, but I don't see them on the ground right now. Well, maybe the monkeys were faster. Here I saw, I think I used to know what this vine with the big fruit clusters is. I think I even tasted the fruit somewhere, and they were disgusting. But either I never knew the name or I forgot it. So if you know what those fruit clusters here can be, please tell me. Rotten palms, the biggest obstacle to jungle hiking. They're the spiniest thing in the jungle. If you see those, stay away from that area. But also, they are very important <coughs> market crop because you make stuff like... Uh, garden furniture from them and also the interesting part for us is their fruits are not seasonal so you can find them throughout the year they're usually horribly sour but well maybe a horribly sour fruit is better than no fruit just don't get entangled in the horrible hooks and spines look at this beautiful hollow tree how nicely it recovered from some big trauma. <laughs> it's still alive and standing. Must have been wounded decades ago and it managed to regenerate itself very nicely. Pacorea brevipes rambai ticus. Well, rambai is, a, is an edible pacorea which is cultivated. Ticus is the mouse, so this is the mouse pacorea with really small fruits. However, since we are not in season, no little mouse rambai fruits to be harvested right now. The boardwalk here is interesting. The base is concrete with a metal and, I don't know, plastic superstructure. <coughs> It's very interesting because traditionally boardwalks in Malaysian national parks are made from iron wood. But I guess I guess there must have been an iron wood boardwalk here, but iron wood has become so horribly expensive and so difficult to obtain due to excessive logging of the jungle in previous decades that I guess here they decided it's cheaper to make the boardwalk out of modern materials. Yeah, the ironwood crisis is, here is a really big one. People told me about it in Borneo. 
like ironwood, you could obtain it everywhere. Everything was made of ironwood because it lasted almost forever in the constantly humid climate. But now, the prices are horrendous, and even if you want to pay horrendous prices, still very difficult to find ironwood. So structures which were built of ironwood until very recently, now you have to build them from other materials because it just doesn't make sense to build them from cheaper, less durable wood. It's not worth the effort, they will fall apart within a few years. Interesting. The jungle around here consists of a few old trees, but mostly young and medium age trees. <coughs> I wonder if there has been some logging near the river. Think about a hundred years ago, the British, I think it was even the British king, convinced the three regional sultans here to set aside large parts of their sultanates, basically the mountains in the center, to create this giant national park. Unfortunately, on the other side of the river, ancient forest is still being cut down. You see lots of trucks with one meter thick trees going past the national park. I wonder if they've harvested trees here before it became a national park, or if there are even some exceptions in later times. There should be more, more big trees here, in my opinion. But I'm still quite close to the visitor center. I mean, you can hike for days and days into this <coughs> jungle and still not come out at the other end. So I've barely scraped the jungle. It's a good quality jungle, very biodiverse, of local species. I don't see invasive stuff here. But as I said, I kind of think that the number of big old trees is suspiciously low here. Oh, and look here. Some. Here we have some salak or snake fruit relative. Yeah, they all grow like this, very low. Guess this could be the red salak, but of course it's not in season. Malvasia flowers. This looks like the Spezia populnea. Yeah, I'm very sure this is a Malvasia flower. Look at... Look at the beautiful inside. The flowers are totally edible. As are the young leaves, here a big leaf, and also the fruits. <coughs> I think it's this tree, yes, I see the big leaves up there. Also, this is one of the most important trees in Polynesia. Actually, people say that without this tree, the Polynesians would never have conquered or settled those millions of square miles in the Pacific at Indian Oceans. They used the rind to bind together the different parts of their canoes and also to make clothes and ropes and everything else and they lose and they use the light wood for those outliers for those tree trunks which they had parallel to their canoes which prevented them from capsizing in uh, in the ocean because a canoe is not the best thing for <laughs> for going into the ocean with its big waves so this tree with the edible flowers, leaves and fruits is basically the most important one, not necessarily on the mainland but on all those giant island archipelagos that cover millions upon millions of square miles in the area between Asia, basically Africa and America and as I said, most parts as long as they are young and uh, young and tender, are edible and quite tasty. There is some fruit lodged here between the planks. Hmm. Is it a f I thought it's a fruit with a peduncle, but now I think it's a seed that's germinating. <laughs> well, that makes it even more difficult to identify it. And it seems it's only one. There is nothing on the jungle floor. 
so yeah I have no idea what this could be another seat lying on the walkway hmm. only one nothing down there on the ground and I have no idea what it is there are a couple of signs around here but they are rare and far between so this could be Zamfabeishi could also be a lot of other things but since it's not the fruit season I'm examining anything that looks like a fruit seed or flower speaking of flowers look at those beauties <clears throat> no idea what they are never seen anything like them yeah I'm afraid there's gonna be more flowers than fruits in this video and even the flowers are not gonna be too much yeah this jungle has been locked this is this is no original jungle also I see some big trash in the jungle from time to time so this jungle this jungle is recovering but we are still not in the original un well undisturbed there is no undisturbed jungle but we are still not in the original jungle with the original big trees Hujan Panas hot rain it sounds almost like Mansania like the little apple of death where if you hide under the tree during rain the water that touches the leaves will burn you however the Mansania grows in the Caribbean not in Malaysia I come back I have to google what this Hujan Panas what this hot rain is supposed to be lots of fruits lying on the ground I thought there could be animal poop but uh, now I'm sure those are some jungle figs hundreds of them lying around here also on this side of the boardwalk so where they are, are they coming from Fig tree there seems to be an artocarpus. So where is the fig tree? Uh, well Ah look at that there are a couple more fresh ones here a green one and two red ones oh even a red one closer to me yeah some thick it was probably edible before it got moldy torch ginger a lingera with stems that green it's probably a lingera elatior but i don't see the big torch like in fluorescences however you can eat the inside of the stem it tastes nice and sour and gingery not gonna do it here because national park here also this melastoma teixe, I think it's even a melastoma species with the small blue hairy berries which are slightly sweet if you are lucky however no berries here for now some heavy duty work going on on the other side of the river but I'm afraid it's either road building or logging yeah this is the edge of the national park so behind it people can do a lot more than here <clears throat> also I don't think I've ever seen those jungle berries before they are beautiful but like national park so not gonna try them by the way the rangers just confiscated my parang so if a tiger jumps out of the jungle and eats me, it's their fault. <laughs> well, kind of suspected that I wouldn't be allowed to carry a parang in such a touristy area in West Malaysia, but you cannot blame a man for wanting to defend himself. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I guess I don't need it for anything anyways because you're not allowed to chop uh, to chop anything and to leave the trail so 
basically it was more or less just for fun beautiful giant jungle tree with its buttresses it kind of looks semi deciduous it's the size of a cottonwood and looks like it looks a lot like a cottonwood huh. I hope it's semi-deciduous and not stressed by some environmental problems and losing its foliage because of that. However, with such a big tree they should have put a label here, but they didn't. I guess they were afraid I might chop stuff like that. See this rotan? They have left it over the trail on purpose so that they can show it to the tourists. However, they have cleaned away all the spiny leaves and leaf sheets well no they were not spiny here anymore they've rotted away but they still have cleaned them away this is the rotten this is basically the stuff you use to make this garden furniture which looks like it's made out of bent bamboo but it's not bamboo it's a palm those rotten palms can follow this forever sometimes for over a hundred meters through the jungle and yeah, people collect them and sell them to other people who who make this garden furniture and other things out of them. It's a more sustainable way to use the jungle than to chop down everything because those rotten palms, they can recover easier than the whole jungle. Interesting stuff lying down there, there is water pipe. Is this a prematurely shed? Unpollinated fruit, Pelong, Pentaspadum SPP. There is another one down here near those water pipes. Let's assume they are probably from this Pelong. Huh. I wonder what they will look like when they mature. Finally some wildlife, some animal scat. I wonder if it was a monkey that deposited it here. It seems to be from a predator because there seem to be some spines of its prey coming out of it. Well, I wonder if some climbing animal deposited it here or if some ranger put it up here so that he can find it and show it to the tourists a couple more times. Yeah, where are the tigers and elephants? and rhinos and the other stuff it's not even not even too much noise strange for such a good jungle they should be a little bit more noise hmm since we are not in the fruit season that's the state which you're gonna see most fruits here Guess this is a palm fruit. Oh yeah. See, it's coming from this quite tall palm up there. No idea what it is. Here a huge jungle tree has come down and created a hole in the canopy. Such spots are of course very important for the jungle to rejuvenate itself. There are lots of species which can only grow with a lot of daylight. So a decade long succession of different species will start here until the hole is closed. However, nowadays with all the invasive species, such, such small, yeah, such small holes in the jungle can also be quite in, quite dangerous for the ecosystem because invasive species can penetrate an intact ecosystem through this one spot which is not intact at the moment. The river is less than 100 meters away. I'm sure there are numerous invasive species along the river. Okay, they will have to cross over 50 meters of... Oh God, I am hearing the chainsaws from the other side. Um, so they would have to cross 50 meters of good jungle, but there is still a chance they can establish here. It's so horrible being in the oldest and biggest national park of the country and hearing the chainsaws and the logging truck from the other side of the river. 
It's really creepy. Do you hear the chainsaw? Now it's getting interesting. <coughs> Lots of fruits lying around here. And some are even quite fresh. The seeds have been extracted from all the fruits. This must be a big, powerful animal. Well, what is, what can climb that high and is still powerful enough to extract the seeds from a big, tough fruit? A hornbill, a monkey, some pinturung or bear. <clears throat> Let's see where those fruits come from. Look like palm fruits. Yeah. There is a palm tree hanging full of fruits over there. See it? <laughs> Can you guess what is strong enough? This is a really tough fruit, folks. What is strong enough to remove the tasty seed? Please write in the comments. The force of a falling tree is incredible. I have cut down numerous trees, well, not of that size, and yes, I admit that I've cut down numerous trees, almost all of them for conservation reasons, but when a tree falls down, you feel humbled, well, first because of the death of a creature, and secondly of the force with which it comes down. Of course, this walkway had no chance, <coughs> trees hollow, so a lot of Animals can live inside. Well, here you can crawl around 10 meters and come out. Here, the hole is blocked by all the stuff that's let down. <laughs> Beautiful. Such things in nature show you how small and insignificant you are. Well, here another thing. See the river? See all the sandbars? The river is quite silty, not too much, but that means, yeah, agriculture and or mining and logging upriver. Yeah, lots of sandbars. Right now not too dirty, that means, I guess because of the rain, they have tuned down the logging activities. But yeah, the jungle river is not supposed to look like this. Not so many sandbars and the water should be more or less crystal clear. Okay, looks like beyond this point, we are not allowed to go without an official guide. So, this part is out of bounds for today, but I am coming back in a couple days. Look at the beautiful big jungle tree in the back, and there are a couple other slightly younger ones here. Yeah, I really want to go there, so guess I have to book some longer tour. Let's go down to the river here and look at the disturbance caused by logging and other human activities. By the way, I wonder if the river came that high. I'm still like 8 to 10 meters about the level of the river or if, it, or if this is just silt which was washed down here from the jungle floor. I guess it's rather silt washed down from the jungle floor because the the jungle vegetation here doesn't look too disturbed. Uh, here is again this Melastomataceae berry. This time it even has flowers and fruits, but the fruits are not ripe. <coughs> Down there, a wild banana, Musa violacea. Oh look, there is a bird at the banana. What is it doing? It's at the male flower. Is it pollinating the banana? Or is it looking for some insects or something else? Oh, I've never seen this in real life before. And I guess now the bird left. Well, Musa violacea, I still haven't managed to try a ripe fruit of this species. Very distinct, very distinct pattern, however. Ah, here is the bird again. Very long curved beak. The flowers are not as beautiful. They are really the flowers. They are really a very beautiful violet flower usually. Did you, did you see the little bird with the curved beak on the on the flower? Unfortunately, I was looking at the flower myself, so I don't know if I even pointed the phone in the right direction. 
So let's walk down here to the river. More melastoma berries here. Not sure what this is, looks almost planted. Let's assess the disturbance caused by human activity here. Hmm. Not too much visible there. Ah, wait. This looks almost like some gnetum. We have something similar in the Mediterranean. Enter the Canaries. Which looks very similar, but I guess it's going to be something different. Please tell me if you know what this is. I've never seen it before. So I don't see too much disturbance here. I don't see invasive species, despite there being some space for them. Look at this giant jungle tree falling down into the river. Hmm. Everything looks quite intact on this side. Also everything looks quite intact on the other side, but remember that we heard uh, that we heard um, chainsaws and and uh, forestry trucks or bulldozers not long ago. Also the color of the river is too murky. There are too many sand bars. There should be more gravel bars and stuff, but not so many sand and mud bars. Yeah, a lot of tourist boats. Yeah, but I'm glad that I cannot see a lot of invasive plants on this side. Maybe I'll hike on the other side some of the next days. There seem to be some wild bananas. Maybe I'll manage to forage something on the other side, I guess. It's legal to snack a wild banana or two. Sisygium sp. This is the genus with all the water apples and rose apples and wax apples. But there are hundreds of species in the genus, all theoretically edible. However, we are out of the fruit season. They don't see single fruit, not even an unripe one on the jungle floor. Here we have supposedly the longest canopy walkway in the world. I haven't planted for today, but for some of the next days. So it's interesting to look at the various trees they cut down here. Look at that. Down here the stem is not too thick. The buttresses are quite prominent. Or look at this one. It's even crazier. There is actually a pretty thin bowl or stem. It's less than 40 centimeters thick. But look at those buttresses. They extend two meters in this direction and less in the other directions. The roots of most jungle trees are very shallow because the nutrients, well the nutrients are mostly in the big tree trunks, but the nutrients on the ground are usually in the top five centimeters of the soil, except if we have fresh volcanic soil. So it doesn't make too much sense for those trees to extend their roots very deep. Also, down there, well, not on such a slope, but if it was a more flat ground down there, it could be waterlocked. Water is not so bad for trees, they need water, but if there is, if the soil is waterlocked, there is no oxygen in there. Tree roots can breathe in water, but they cannot breathe in waterlocked soil. And that's why the roots are usually very shallow. That's why for stability, they have those huge buttresses. I mean, this is not a really giant jungle tree. But still very impressive. Down here the bowl, less than 40 centimeters thick, with two meter buttresses. Funny enough, about five or six meters above ground, the bowl gets thicker, maybe 80, 90 centimeters. Down there, doesn't need to be that thick, because the buttresses provide the stability. Further up, where it doesn't need buttresses anymore, the bowl gets thicker and provides the stability. 
This is not exclusive to the tropical rainforest, but it's most typical here. But you can find it even in temperate forests, like in riparian forests in Central Europe. You find similar trees, because the riparian forests in Central Europe are quite similar to tropical riparian rainforests. This palm tree with the spiny stem and those aerial roots, I think it's quite popular in parks and botanic gardens. Nice! Tall straight ball, it nice, nice leaves on top here next to it, a young one, I think it's not even a seedling, I think probably it's, it's also reproducing vegetatively, the old trunk next to it, a young trunk, and a couple really young ones, which still don't have a trunk, yeah, seems to be the same, spidey ball, yeah, I've seen this a lot in botanic gardens, I guess if I tell the park rangers the number, they could find out the name, but too much trouble. Eripterocarpus. This is the dominant family, Dipterocarpaceae, here in the lowland. And lowland means up to over a thousand meters. Rainforest. Why is it called Pelimbing? Pelimbing is the name of a lot of fruit species around here. I didn't know that Dipterocarpus has big juicy fruits. have to ask them what carrying belly big exactly means, but could be interesting in regards to its fruits. Shorea is the tallest non-coniferous tree in the world. In Borneo there is one which is just shy of 100 meters. I guess the label is supposed to be for the big tree, not for the vines here. Also Shorea it's a very important commercial tree, well, of course, for the timber. Oh, wait, is this a Shorea? This almost looks like, an, like a very underdeveloped, prematurely shed Shorea uh, fruit. Actually, when they are well developed, they have a big, a big fatty seed inside. And in Borneo, the people collect them in huge amounts and sell them the oil in the seed is very sought after the Shorea. Not only the tallest non-coniferous tree in the world, but also an important provider for oil. It can be like an alternative to palm oil, you know, you don't need to cut down the jungle, you can collect the oil in the jungle and have tourism and hunting and other things at the same time. So I really would look into Shorea as an alternative for palm oil. Some elephants cross the boardwalk here. Look at the traces, huge traces, really deep. Here, one even stepped on the boardwalk and didn't break it. But I guess that's the reason the boardwalk is broken in many places. It's a very stable construction. Here, it even managed to withstand one elephant footprint, but in other places it broke down. So it definitely did not break down under the weight of the tourists, but of the elephants. Look at the size of this trace. But the funny thing is, usually when you see elephants breaking through a forest, for example in Africa, they destroy everything here. Look at how careful they are. You can see where they have walked through the jungle, but they've done it really gently. Yeah. With their huge, very soft feet. Look at that. They haven't done more damage than a group of people walking through the jungle. But if anybody wants to tell me that those are no elephants, well, please tell me which butthole did this come out of. There is nothing except for an elephant that can make pellets that big. Look at those. And maybe even termites, although termites are usually pale on this tree trunk. Very interesting highway junction here. Those two highways, the one coming from the ground and the one coming from the tree, joining here. And the ends all heading to the right, I guess, towards their end hill. Termite mound. 
another trail here. However, this time I cannot establish what animal used it. Strangely enough, does not seem to continue on the other side of the boardwalk. So I guess it might be some sort of trail that you're allowed to use with a guide and not an animal crossing or something. I don't like that there's so much trash lying around here from the old boardwalks. Also some random ropes which shine almost like asbestos. I mean, yeah, the entrance fee to the park is very low, but the whole area lives off tourism, and tourists, they tend to notice that when a lot of old construction material is lying everywhere in the jungle. Maybe a slight adjustment here, well, I mean, <laughs> If they would do something, I guess they would just carry it 20 meters away instead of bringing it back to the village and disposing of it properly. But still, it doesn't look nice the way it is right now. I've seen those fruits or something very similar in Borneo. But if I ever knew the name, I already forgot it. wonder how those came down. Uh -huh. Down here, there are a lot which have been opened by a seed-eating animal, which seems to be quite a messy eater, because most of the fruits falling down did not have their seeds removed. Interesting. I'd really like to know what tree they are coming from. Nice viewpoint. There is a surprising amount of old jungle on the other side. Basically, from here 95% of the area outside the National Park looks like it's old growth jungle. Well, I don't know if the National Park doesn't continue somewhere in the background. I know that there are areas there which are not part of the National Park, but maybe the high hills are still. Surprised to see still so much Good jungle outside the National Park, but as I told you, we hear the bulldozers, we hear the chainsaws, and yesterday on the way here, we passed dozens of trucks loaded with giant ancient tree trunks. Now, what is this large fruit on the ground? Huh? Looks almost like a Vilupaya fruit. But I've never seen such an elongated species, or such a, a species with such elongated fruits. As you can see here, there is another half fruit. This seems to be a normal shape. Is it really a Vilupaya? Those are too rotten to even attempt to eat them. Same goes for the green one. The green one was thrown down by some animal. However, those animals didn't throw down anything more ripe, it seems. There are vines here, a lot of them. Very thick ones over there, so it could be Vilupaya. But as I said, I've never encountered such a spindle-like fruit shape in Vilupaya. Well, it's possible there are many species in this genus. The termites are totally taking this little tree apart. <laughs> Here an area where vines are really dominating the jungle. Yeah, folks, not so many fruits. So I'm trying to show you a couple of nice features of the jungle, which are not directly related to eating fruits. <laughs> was clever enough to bring two mangoes with me to the jungle, because I knew first that we are not in the fruit season, and second, I'm not supposed to eat local fruits here. Now look at that. Hmm. 
What is this? This could be Vilupaya El Meriai. Where the aerials are white and not orange like in most other species. However, it's not in season it seems. Also it seems like the animals are not throwing down even unripe fruits. But from the shape and size, totally looks like Elmeriae. However, yeah, hard to tell from just one totally rotten fruit. Now we are talking business. This Velopaya was, was probably ripe when it was eaten. But it's neither the spindle shaped one, I'm pressing it so it's a little bit spindle, no, it's a round one. But I don't think it's Almeria. Is it possible? But I encountered three different Vilupaya species fruits within a hundred or so meters. Yeah, it's totally possible. They like to grow together. Hmm. Pity. It, there is almost nothing in season. However, this last fruit was probably more or less in season. But, yeah, those little climbing critters have a big advantage over me. Look at that. Here they dropped an unripe fruit. Let's try to squeeze what's inside. Yeah, this looks totally like a Vilukpaya. More or less like Vilukpaya Zaravakensis or Angustifolia or something like that. So here within a hundred meters we have a Zaravakensis looking Vilukpaya, an Elmeriae looking Vilukpaya, and this spindle like this with the spindle like fruits, which I'm not familiar with. I guess most probably the last fruits came from this big vine. Ah. However, when I look up, I cannot spot more fruits. They are hard to spot before they turn orange. Well, let's continue. Maybe we'll find some ripe orange fruit. Maybe we'll find something that will help us identify those fruits. Another nice viewpoint marks the end of the trail I can go without a guide and I don't want to overdo it here I don't want to <laughs> upset the guides too much so I gonna stick to the rules but look at this giant jungle areas high mountains in the background hills in the foreground it's not the size of the heart of Borneo but it's as far as I know the largest jungle area still remaining in West Malaysia. It seems to be in quite good condition. Whoa. Over there, there seem to be a couple huge rocks. Huh. I really have to think if I should join a group for a, for a trekking trip. But for now, my sight is supposed much closer because I think that I spotted Vilupaya fruits in the canopy. Let's see if I can show them to you. Uh, come on. Okay, in the middle of the frame there is a pale, a pale little ball which I see as bright green but my phone doesn't show it so nicely. That's most probably a Vilupaya fruit. Also, so at least the second other one. Yeah, well, let's see. Over here in the center, there are at least three, there are at least three fruits here, maybe even four. They are all green, so doesn't even make sense to go down there and check if something is lying on the ground. I already found the green one. So nice, nice to see that there are so many different 
We look by a species in West Malaysia. They said they have very little experience with West Malaysian jungles and I'm here basically to change that. Yeah, I could eat the gingers, but they don't provide a lot of nutrition. They're a very healthy snake, but yeah. Well, bigger and more nutritious are the pandanus buds. Actually, the pandanus fruit is not the main food, but the pandanus buds. So here, a cluster of pandanus, I could get a lot of food out of it, but without the parang, those things are also horribly spiny, so without the parang, you might get more wounds than all this is worth. Same with most palm trees. Without a parang or an axe or some other or a, some other big knife or other big tool, all those pandanus and palms and honey inside tree trunks, they are kind of out of reach for you. You can collect ants and boil them into an ant paddy. The ant highway has decreased in size <coughs> during the half hour I was gone, but those are a little bit small. Look at this huge ant here on the ground. It's like over two centimeters, almost an inch long. A couple thousand of those. I think the Native Americans in the Amazon, they boil them and make them into patties. And of course, if you find the larvae, they are poor fat. Well, also have a lot of protein, so don't worry. If you are not a vegetarian, the ants would also provide <coughs> food for you. But as a vegetarian, outside of the fruit season and in the deep, undisturbed jungle, yeah, it's getting quite tight. Maybe I could snack on a, on a tasty elephant. But when I look at the size of those critters, uh, might be a little bit too big for me. <laughs> Let me think. There are also some ways to get food out of elephant poop. But that's usually when they have been eating grains because they don't process them very well. Like in a very tight situation, you could wash out grains from elephant poop, but uh, must be very desperate for that, and I don't think those jungle elephants here are eating a lot of grains, so nope. I could make paper from their poop and maybe use it to start a fire, but for food, I guess the elephants right now are out of bounds. Diosporus cortechini. Well, Diosporus is the genus where you have kaki. Kaju orang. Well, however, in the Diosporus genus, you also have hundreds of trees which, with fruits which are not edible. We have a couple other edible, tasty, really good fruits, a couple more or less edible, and then a lot of species which are very much valued for their timber. It's ebony, the black timber. However, it doesn't mean that when you fight the Diospyros, you will find tasty, juicy, edible fruits for sure. Maybe the next tree. I'll find something. Guinea penangensis. Well, it has no local name. If something has no local name, there is a good chance that it has no big edible fruits because people would usually name every nice tasty edible jungle fruit just to distinguish it from other species. Some animal is loudly cracking something, probably some seeds in the canopy. However, every time I record it, it stops. Something is named Toxicaria, stay away from it. Interesting. Ipo is also the name of a big city here in Malaysia. It also, somebody has chopped this tree many times. Does it maybe have some sap, which is interesting as a medicine or for some other purpose? There are suspiciously many parang traces here. They confiscated my parang, but I guess some other people are allowed to chop trees. Let's see. I think I scared this animal away. Let's see, maybe it dropped some stuff. Should be somewhere here. 
to the left and not very far away from the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. However, for now, cannot spot any conspicuously fruity things lying on the ground here. Kedun Dong! This is a popular fruit tree around here, but was the letter name Dactyores Costata? Or do they name several different fruit trees Kedun Dong? But definitely an interesting one because Kedun Dong is found in many village gardens. However, I think other species because usually they are dwarf trees. Also here are some big, not so spiny palms. The survival situation could probably get the hearts of palms with just moderate effort and moderate scratches. What a beautiful flower. Nice. There is even a little fruit inside. <laughs> oh, folks, this smells amazing. This smells of cinnamon. Oh. Mm. Well, cinnamon, no, more of vanilla. But it's, it's not vanilla. One, two, three, well, six. Six, six, uh, uh, well, three petals, three sepals, but still, mm, it's no orchid. Vanilla is an orchid. I lost one petal here. No, it's not cinnamon. It's, it's totally vanilla, but not the fake vanilla smell that you get in the, you get nowadays in the supermarkets, the real vanilla of my childhood. You can still buy real vanilla, but... Most of vanilla ice cream, ah, sorry that I'm not filming it, I'm smelling it. Most of vanilla ice cream and other stuff is no real vanilla. I've met other orchids which smell a lot like vanilla, but what's this? This is no orchid. Oops, losing more and more of those petals and sepals. The fruit is very different. What is this vanilla smelling stuff? Only one flower, unfortunately. Oh my, mm, amazing. A spiny low tree. Could this be the so-called Indian plum? Hmm. No fruits. Could recognize it by the fruits, but there are no fruits. Still interesting. Basically growing low and spiny. It's not such a common strategy in the jungle. Usually everything tries to get tall as fast as possible. What is this? Ah, oh, we are nearby this thing on the pole. Here are other ones. Maybe it's no scat. Maybe it's f fruits. Yes, I think now. Well, let's smell it. Mm, doesn't smell like poop. So I guess those are fruits. Okay, fruits which look kind of ripe-ish. Hmm. However, cannot see any more of them on the ground. One of the trees has a label. Don't know if the trees come from it. Ah, here are some other type of fruits. Mm. Well, this looks almost like pataya inflorescences. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, folks, I'm really scraping the bottom. Everything that looks like a fruit is being examined right now because the big, nice, tasty stuff, it's just not around except for the vilupayas, which are not ripe. Uh -huh. Here it is. Ah, so this is just a thickened stalk, and then you have... Is this a male flower? Yes, those look like stamens. Ah... So this is not a fruit, this is just the male inflorescence or male flower. But if the male stuff is so big, how big will the female one be? Of course, it's not going to be ripe for a couple months to come, I think. Another big fruit. Oh, here on the ground. 
let's see what this is. Huh. Looks almost like a Velok Paya. It's very hard. It's very hard for a Velok Paya. Hmm. Hmm. Probably something different. Is it the only one? Guess so. There are vines around us, but not the big conspicuous Velupaya vines. That would also be an indicator against it being a Velupaya. Oh, there is another one there, or is it the one? No, the one I threw down is here. Another one there. Okay, so there are a couple of them around. The third one over there. Huh. But they are all so far gone, it doesn't even make sense. Another one here. Ah, what tree are they coming from? Of course, from too high to find them. Hmm, giant bamboo. I didn't pay attention to it when I came here. Of course, under certain conditions, giant bamboo can give you food and or water. When there are bamboo sprouts, you can harvest them. They are big, tasty and yeah, nutritious enough. However, no bamboo sprouts now. Also, if it's wet enough, bamboo can provide you with a lot of clean, tasty water. But I have no parang, and even if I had one, I wouldn't start chopping around here in the national park. Yeah, but right now, not a single bamboo sprout. Of course, if I check a lot of different bamboo clusters, I might find one or two, or I might not, and I might expend a lot of energy breaking through this quite difficult part of the jungle, which I wouldn't do here because we are not supposed to get away from the trails. Well, maybe I'll find more stuff around the accommodation here. Giant taro. If you know how to eat it, this can give you a lot of nutrients. However, it's full of oxalates. If you don't know how to eat it, you're in trouble. Also, the monkey pots, they are tart but also sweet. Apart from that, not so many. Not so many edible things grown here. <laughs> a little chili tree. I guess chilies will help you get down anything and keep it down. Nothing edible around those vines. Yeah. This looks like it's some type of... I know it's not some type of Viteishi. First I thought it could be some kangaroo grape or so, but not. This is an edible, however bland, thick species. Cauliflorus, you see the old inflorescences on the thick branches. However, not, uh, yeah, one or two fruits clinging there. You can cook it into a curry, it will provide bulk to the curry. I don't know if it will provide a lot of taste or nutrient. A couple are to carpus trees of different species in the background. In the fruit season, those will also be very important assets. But now, nothing. Star fruit, Dukulangsat, and the big old mango tree. Yeah. In the fruit season, this will be a good area for foraging. The cartocarpus tree in the background. Another big mango tree over there. Oh! Passion flower. Whatever they are passion flowers, they are also passion fruits. Ah. Let's see. Do I see any fruits, even small and green ones? No. The flowers are falling off without producing fruits. Same here. Look at that. So many passion flowers. 
Not a single fruit. Please comment on the species, folks. Which, which passion flower species is this? With those beautiful purple flowers. That's what the leaves and the tendrils and the young stems look like. Yeah. All the flowers, they fall off without pollination. What a pity. I would have really liked to taste the new passion flower species. I'm pretty sure that here it's not forbidden to eat them, unlike in the jungle. So many passion flower leaves everywhere. But not a single fruit. What a pity. A young durian tree here and thick berry. Thick berry fruits are edible. This durian will take years before it produces anything significant. Big rambutan trees and another big mango over there. But nothing. This fruit season in the tropics is so crazy. Like, we think that they have water and heat all year round and should produce fruits all year round. But nope. Most of the species really concentrate fruit production in a very limited fruit season. A jackfruit tree in the background. This is not limited to the fruit season, but I don't see a single fruit. Toxic cycas. Some water apple, mango steed in the background. So there are fruit trees here and there. Here those people are standing under a small durian tree. But none of those things has even a single fruit. A casturi lime. Don't even know what this big tree is. I just know it's being strangled. Well, it was being strangled. They cut down the strangler fig. Another star fruit, but no fruits. In the background, another water apple, but no fruits. Oh, cherries, Montigia calabura, the tropical cherry. This one doesn't look too healthy. Oh, well, they've just put it in the ground recently. Hope it survives. There's another tree back there, which is well established, but still small. Nah, tropical cherries in flower, but not in fruit. Nothing, nothing edible, not a single tiny edible fruit, neither in the jungle, nor in this park around the National Park's accommodations. Oh, beware of violent monkey. This water apple is in flower. Wow, this is a really ancient cycas. This must be many hundreds of years old. This is the biggest one I've ever seen. Look at that, a trunk, a meter in diameter. The stems are like six meters tall, and together with the leaves, this thing is almost eight meters tall. I've never seen anything like this. I remember I saw a 40, 50 year old photo of some much smaller ones and they haven't changed since the photo. I saw the photo when I was right in front of the tree. But this thing, this must be, oh, when you look from here it's even, the trunk is even wider, a meter twenty maybe. This must be many, many hundreds of years old. Please comment folks, how old do you think this dinosaur is? Well, it, it is from the time of the dinosaurs, it is. It is not a palm, it's more closely related to conifers. And it's not the only one, there is another one over there. Wow, where did they get such giant, such giant things from? Probably duck them out somewhere and save them. Yeah, this one is just as impressive very toxic. There seem to be some ways to eat some relatives of them, but not not those here. Here another casturi lime. Uh, really not much. Actually not, not much, but nothing in the fruit department. 
Nice pickled mango trees everywhere, especially in the background. Also here on this side. I guess during the mango season the workers will have a lot of trouble cleaning away the fruits. I mean, no way you can harvest them all up there. Here another one. So you basically have, you have to pick them from the ground. Now it's getting interesting. I need to get to the park center and see whether they are gonna relinquish my parang or not. Wish me luck. After a lengthy discussion, the parang was returned to me. Well, in exchange for the promise that I will not bring it back into the national park. Well, after such a meager foraging trip, guess I'm gonna go to the restaurant boat on the other river bank and stuff my face with some normal cooked food.